Today's episode of the Believe It Steelers podcast is brought to you by betonline.ag in week seven of the NFL season is here. If you want to place a bet on the gridiron action, betonline is the place to do it. I'm betting online today that Case Keenan would throw for 250 yards against the Denver Broncos defense. Wow. So psychic guy out on the pod early today. This episode will be out Friday, so we'll see what happens on Thursday night football. But again, if you want to place a bet on the action, bet online is the place to do it. Head to the new and updated desktop or mobile website to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use our promo code believe 50 that's B L E A V five zero to receive your bonus bet online where the game starts. All right. Cue the music. It's time to start the show. And welcome to another edition of the Believe in Steelers podcast on the Believe Podcast Network. I'm your host, Mark Bergen, joined as always by my guy, two-time Super Bowl champion and 12-year veteran of the Pittsburgh Steelers, Ike Taylor. IT Steelers headed three and three, headed into the bye week, week seven. We got a lot to talk about here on today's show. Yeah, they got a nice little week off. Honestly, I think it came at the right time with a few guys banged up. But, you know, they're on the two-game win streak. Let's see what the Pittsburgh Steelers can do. Because from here on out, man, they, what, they got like 12 more weeks? 12 weeks straight, 12 or 13. Right, this 17-game season is killing me. They got like 12, you know, 12 or 13 games straight, man. So hopefully the Steelers can be the Steelers, uh, get back to what they need to do, and that's winning football games consistently. So they had a slow start, but they, you know, they 500 right now, Mark. So I'm excited that they have this break. At the same time, they got to hit the ground running when they come back. And let's see if they change a few things and what I mean by changing a few things is running the ball a little bit more still. We've seen that more the last two weeks, Ike, and we've seen them put Big Ben under center more, and you see that they come out victorious. Steelers on a bye week with several other teams in the league, the Bills, Cowboys, Jags, Vikings, and Chargers also on a bye in week seven. I am very curious to see what happens in tonight's game between the Browns and the Broncos, Ike. We'll see. And by the time this episode comes out, our viewers and listeners will know the result of that game. But the Browns are awfully beat up going into this one. Case Keenan's going to start over Baker Mayfield, who's dealing with the torn labrum in his left throwing shoulder, uh, his left shoulder, his non-throwing shoulder. But it's really disrupted his ability to play really since week two. And considering all the other injuries, Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt are out. Jar, uh, Jarvis Landry and Odell Beckham are working their way back from injuries. The rookie, Jeremiah owusu koromo has got an injury. Steelers might be finding the Browns at the right time in week eight, a Halloween matchup between the two AFC North teams. Yeah, the Browns are down bad right now, but they still have talent. You know, let's see what that defense do for the Browns because, you know, just looking at their roster, you're like, man, they got some they got some good pedigrees over there. They got some dogs over there. But they haven't been playing like that. Mark, so time will tell. But mm-hmm. Case Keenum, I've been, I've been a fan of Case Keenum. Um, I always thought he was a trailer. And we talk about these trucks and trailers. But I thought he, he just he's just a natural leader, you know. So when their weapons do come back, they still going to have something to reckon with. I think the reason why he's going to go for 250, 250 yards passing is because he don't have, you know, Kareem Hunt and Nick Chubbs sitting in that backfield. So I think the coaching staff will ask him to do more. But, yeah, I'm digging. I'm digging Case Keenan right now. Yeah, we're projecting this into the future, eh? But I can't wait till the internet lights on fire when Case Keenum finds OBJ for a deep touchdown and they have Uh a rapport that Mm -hmm. Baker Mayfield doesn't have. The storylines write themselves in this league. Let's be honest here. Yeah, you already know. He fired OBJ, OBJ, take a 50 yard to the crib, but he fired OBJ for two touchdowns in one game. You know, <laughs> go crazy over that thing. And uh, so we'll see again, the two teams, the Browns and the Steelers play in week eight. So we'll have our eye on that matchup tonight. Ike through, I, you can't say the first half, but headed into the bye week, Steelers that have played well so far this year, I think it all starts up front with Cam Hayward and TJ Watt. 
why providing a great early return on the investment to make him the hundred million dollar man on the eve of this season. And then Cam Hayward, when I see the PFF grades each week and he's still ranked above Aaron Donald, I think everything starts up front for the Steelers there. I'd expect them to continue to play well, but to play at this high of a level throughout the course of the season. If they do, you're talking about not just Pro Bowl, but all pro nominations for both players. I think they've been playing that well thus far through six games this year. Yeah, you know, Cam, at one point in time, he didn't make the Pro Bowl, but he went all pro. And I think we talked about that on our show. So I'm sure Cam would take all pro any day of the week looking on that resume. Uh, TJ is just TJ. And it, it's, it's not easy saying that about a lot of people. You know, TJ, if you can just say, oh, that's just him. If you can say he's just Mr. Clutch, if you can say he's Mr. Turnover Machine, if you can say, man, he's just whenever you need to play, that's him. That's, that's TJ. You can't say that about a lot of people so nonchalant. So CJ keep playing at a high level all pro, of course. Uh, Cam playing at a, a high level all pro, but everybody knows TJ. You know, you have to be a football fan to know Cam because he is in the interior. But this defense runs, and the only reason why this defense runs is because of Cam Hayward. Yeah, and I wonder how many times, like, we've been ha- doing our show since October 2019 where we say, I think Cam Hayward's having his best season of football. And it seems like the last several years we've been right. able to say that because he keeps rev- raising his level of play. 32 right. years old, I don't expect that to last for forever, but he's been on quite a run. And you see the disruption that he causes. Like, you go back and watch the film. Watch how teams run away from where Cam Hayward is lined up. And he's still able to make plays, even despite the fact that teams are game planning for him. Nah, see... For Cam, it's not going to be the age factor. And the reason why it's not going to be the age factor, he's never been very athletic. He's never been very fast. But this is what he has been. He's been a guy who hustles to the ball. He'll run 40, 50 yards down the field off of a screen. He's been a guy who's a technician. So hand placement and understanding where he needs to be. He's been a guy for the Pittsburgh Steelers since he's walked on the field, always had a high grade with your offense on the defensive side. So when you have a guy like that, it's like having a Tom Brady. We all, we all knew Tom Brady wasn't fast. We knew Tom Brady wasn't athletic. But Tom Brady in that pocket is a magician, you know, and that's Cam Hayward on that defense. Cam Hayward is a magician. He just know how to use his hand placement. He know where he needs to be at all times. He's going to be where he needs to be at all times on the field. So that's why I think he can play to whenever he wants to play when it comes down to that position. But only a few guys get to play like that or do play like that. And one of those guys is Cam Hayward. Ike, you tell me all the time, listen to what the players say. And it was just a few weeks ago on Sunday Night Football when Chris Collinsworth endorsed Hayward and said, this guy's a Hall of Famer. Tells me everything I need to know. I'll let you, boy. I'll let you, boy. That's, that's, that's Cam, bro. Like, Cam... Cam came in as a rookie, and he he had a, he had a rocky he had a rocky he had a rocky start. He really did. He had a rocky start. It didn't look good at first, till we got in his ass. And when we got in his ass, he he woke up. He well, he had a few words. He had a few words with some of the veterans, me, Ryan Clark, and uh, RC got in his ass, and he woke his and he woke his ass up. Yeah, you're not in Columbus, Ohio at Ohio State anymore. It woke him up. And since then, he has been what it, he has been what we thought he could be. And that's that's a Hall of Famer. I mean, if the man continue doing what he's doing, you know, it depends on who's gonna go in there with him, you know, between the ballots or whatever. But the dude just the dude, he's Mr. Professional. He's everything you want your kid to be on and off the field, you know. So shout out to Cam, man, Cam Hayward, man. We won't talk about him enough. We talk about TJ. We talk about Mika. We won't talk about Cam too much, but we're giving him his props right now. And I'm sure that role that you and your Steelers teammates played as veterans in that locker room, I'm sure he plays that role now at this point in his career as well for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Just again, you tell me each week, it all starts up front with him. And I know he doesn't because he plays on the interior. He's not going to generate all the stats the same way that an edge rusher would, 
But again, right. I look at those PFF grades each week. I look at the disruption that he caused in the uh, backfield, on running plays, other opposing quarterbacks. And when I see that he's graded week in and week out, it, you know, based on okay, what my eyes are telling me, when I see how he's graded above Aaron Donald, and we know what Aaron Donald can do, bro. That, that tells you how high a level he's playing at. He, he prides himself in that. When you got a guy who want to make all A's, regardless of how tough the task is, that's a lot of pride. That's a lot of want to. And like you say, just watching his grades from PFF, that's he he prides himself on that, man. Every time I see it, because I be saying it come across my my social media, Cam is always up there, one of the highest grades. Each week, he's always one of the highest grades, one of the highest grades, one of the highest grades. It's hard. That's hard. And we're talking about the entire league. He be having one of the highest grades over the entire league. So he's just Mr. Consistent, man. He missed the consistent, but you know, Cam don't have to say too much. His work speaks for himself. And his, his best, his best work, his best tool is being available. That's his best tool. Cause the man is always available. I don't know if we can get the stats on how many games Cam have missed throughout his career, but I guarantee you we can count them on one hand. <laughs> I'm going to get the Believe in Steelers research department right on this, Ike. TJ Watt winning AFC Defensive Player of the Week as well. He's one of the many players that helps reap the benefits of what Cam right. Hayward can do up front as well. And just pulling up Cam Hayward's uh, – he, he has played – I have pulled this up on Pro Football Reference – He's played in all 16 games dating back to the 2017 season where he played 15 games. 2016 games, he played in seven. But he's pretty much played in 16 games throughout the course of his career other than that 2016 season. So, Ike, you didn't even know the numbers off the top of your head, but it's like you're exactly right. You're spot on. So what did he miss, one or two games? He missed, let's see, live math here. <laughs> It, it's uh, you can count it on two hands because again in the 2016 season they played in seven games so nine games missed there and then missed one game in the 2017 season so eight games total over you know he's been in the league since 2011 so you do the math there you can count it it's 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 less than 10 games during his career that's it. for a defensive lineman that's incredible boy that's that's a hell of that's a hell of a stat that's a hell of a stat. <laughs> That's Live another. math's always dangerous on the air, Ike, but shout out to the Believe It Steelers research department for that one. I started with the defense just for you, Ike Taylor, today because I know you love the defense side of the football. We've got to go to the offense. And okay. before we get into players that I think need to step up in the second half of the season, I want to say, and I've been banging this drum for a few weeks now, establish the Robin to Najee Harris as Batman. That is going to be a major storyline on the back half of the season. We're into October, almost into November now, Ike. And you tell me how it gets colder out, especially in Pittsburgh, and the importance of running the football becomes more and more important. Yes, establish Najee. Yes, make him the bell cow as your first-round draft pick. But make sure that he can stay fresh in the games that you really need him. Whether it's Anthony McFarland coming back from a knee injury, whether it's Balaj stepping up, whether Benny Snell finally – can prove and make the most of his opportunity. You know, whoever the third running back is, is probably going to play a special teams role or if they want to mix in two other guys. But I want to see someone other than Harris step up and carry some of the load for the Steelers in the back half of the season. Hey, but Belage, Belage didn't do bad when he stepped in. Mm -hmm. but Belage, when Belage came in, he, he he's a north-south kind of runner. He, he trying to get four and five yards every time and as an offensive court, and he was running with attitude. He was running like somebody didn't hit his sister or somebody. So that 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 man was running. And, and I, my personal opinion, I thought it made Najee kind of run harder when he got back in the game. So mm. you 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 get it. And he's a big guy. So when I saw that, I said, oh, this, this dude got a lot of attitude when he get the ball in his hand. And he's looking for contact. So this November, December, January of football come around, you got a dude who's big and he's looking for a lot of contact. Man, by the time that third quarter come, man, you know them safeties in them corners, they're going to be making executive decisions like, okay, do I stay on this block? Do I let this receiver block me all the way down the field? Do I fake try to share the block? Or do I let this guy run past me and try to chase him? Them are three decisions them, them DBs make 
when it gets cold in November, December, January of football, Mark. Executive decisions. Now, does some of that depend on oh, what's my contract situation look like? Like, what's the cost benefit analysis running through a DB's brain when he needs to make that executive decision, Mike? I don't know because I wasn't one of those guys who made those <laughs> decisions, but I, I, I've seen it plenty of times sitting on that sideline and watching guys try to hit a Deuce Staley, a Jerome Bittis, a, 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 a Will, a Willie. A Will Parker, like I just seen, I did Najee Davenport. I I just seen this plenty of times with big backs we done had, and guys made the decisions like Nah, Jack, not today, not today. So you had to be a Lashawn McCoy for some of them guys to make that decision. But the, the running backs that we had, them DBs used to make them executive decisions all the time. Interesting, interesting. We'll go back and watch some film, Mike, and you could point this out to me. I love right. it. I love it. We can, we can call it making executive decisions. That's, that's going to be the head. <laughs> this might be a new segment as part of our tailored talk when we break down the film analysis from the game, Mike. And I know that that's been very popular with our viewers as well. And it's really fun doing that with you each Monday to go over a key play from the game through your eyes, through what you see. Uh, on the offensive side of the ball, two players I'd like to see step up in the second half. James Washington, Eric Ebron, both players in contract seasons and both players have a great opportunity to step up with Juju Smith Schuster out for the rest of the season with the shoulder injury. So Washington, I'd just like to see him get the opportunity because he only played eight snaps in last week's game. And Mike Tomlin was asked about it uh, by reporters and he says, no, you know, we kind of like the matchup of putting Ray Ray McLeod out there, who's been in more of a special teams role. Ray Ray McLeod had 52 offensive snaps. James Washington only had eight. I would like to see that changed because if you're going to keep Ray Ray McLeod in a return role, keep him free <laughs> and let him let him focus a little bit more on the special teams. Bless you, Ike Taylor. Thank you. No, I'm going with James Washington, man. I, well, I think <sighs> – <sighs> Excuse me. My bad. This is a live broadcast. Uh, B- uh, bless you again. I was waiting for the second sneeze. Yeah, I, I think Pittsburgh getting too cute now, bro. They 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 stick to what had you winning ball games. And when he was winning ball games, James Washington, all you have to do is ask Ben, was coming up clutch. <sighs> <laughs> right? You got a triple so far. Bless you again. Right. Thank you. Appreciate you. But yeah, let's 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 not go to McLeod. Let's keep McLeod right now, you know, sitting sitting back there catching punch, trying to make plays. But your answer to to Juju being out is James Washington. <laughs> <laughs> Producer Courtney, if you can like put like a tally in, we could ring a bell in the corner each time Ike sneezes. This could be a new segment here on the Believe in Steelers podcast. Right. <laughs> And you know she will. You, you know oh, yeah, of course. Of course. Of course. Ike, I'm looking at after the bye week. You've got Cleveland in week eight. Uh-huh. You've got Chicago in Detroit at home the following two weeks. They're going to have the Bears on Monday night football. We're going to get you on the Manning cast, Ike. I've been campaigning for that. Okay. Then you've got Chargers, Bengals, Ravens, <gasps> Vikings, Titans, Chiefs. Then you finish out. Browns and Ravens. I tell you what, a banged up Browns team in week eight. We'll see who ends up playing in that game because there's a lot of time between now and then. Browns are very beat up right now. But the Bears and Lions, like you can never just pencil in a win in this league, but I'm looking at it and I would imagine the way that how the teams have played up to this point that Steelers would be favored at home in both of those games. Right. You could be talking about Steelers on a two game winning streak right now. You add three more headed into Los Angeles in week 11. I know players don't look ahead, but I'm just looking at this overall. And it's bye week. Steelers could be sitting pretty if they're able to take care of business. It, really, this AFC North matchup against the Browns in week eight is going to be, could be the key game this season on Halloween as well. That's going to be just an incredible matchup. It will be in Cleveland. So you've got to go to right. First Energy Stadium, but. If, if you'd have told me the Steelers would be in this spot 
like several weeks ago, I would have done anything for it because on the three game losing streak, it was like, what are the Steelers going to do offensively? They've got back to running the football, but they're sitting in a pretty good spot in the bye week. You know, you want to be above 500 and three and three, but all things considered, again, I, I, I look at Browns are beat up. Bears have a rookie quarterback. You know, the Lions are winless right now. You, you might be sitting pretty if you can get by Cleveland in week eight. Yeah, you always. So what I learned from Kevin Cobra, who's the general manager for the Pittsburgh Steelers, right now it's going to kind of throw everything off because of the 17 games. But you always won't go three and one every quarter. You know, so if Pittsburgh, like the first quarter, three and one, second quarter, three and one, that puts you at the end of the season, 12 and four. So now with the mix up a little bit with the 17 games, uh, one of them quarters, you got to go, you know, what, four, four and one so or, or three and two. Something like that. So Pittsburgh right now, they're sitting at three and three. Uh, they they got a bye week, so everybody that kind of fall off or go up when it comes down to the AFC North. But they got to get their get back with with Cleveland from last year for Halloween. They got to get their get back. So they'll put them at one and one. Yes, they'll put them at one and one in the division. Then they got to get their get back with 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 the uh, Cincinnati Bengals. Then they'll probably split, my personal opinion. They'll probably split with the with the Baltimore Ravens. But then again, they always have the Baltimore Ravens number. Like it's as good as the Ravens play. For some reason, Coach T always find a game plan to shut Lamar down and make Lamar beat the pass. The only thing is Lamar is sitting in that damn pocket and he's dropping dimes. So that's gonna be very interesting to see this year. But yeah, if Pittsburgh didn't have any business against the Cleveland Browns for Halloween. They'll put them at one and one, and God dang it, they got action. They got action. We got action. I knew, I knew the line was coming. We got action. I knew yeah. it was coming. Because by the you end mentioned. of the day, you you win your division. That's an automatic bid in the playoffs, and that's yes, all. You, so yeah, Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh. I, I think, I think it's reversing. From last year, I'm just nervous of that offense, man. 17 points a game, bro. Yeah, and that that ain't gonna that ain't gonna that ain't gonna cut. I, I coach a 10 year old team. And I tell them all we need is 17 points a game. <laughs> coach, I ain't gonna help us win the ball game. But 17 points a game with the lead, Mark. Nah, Jack. Nah. So they gotta find it. They gotta find either either they're gonna do 17 points a game and win the time of possession which they have been the last two games, mm. or they got to score more points. So that's how – I'm not going to be greedy. As long as Pittsburgh win it, Mark, I won't be greedy. But, yeah, that's – if you're going to give me 17 per game, but you win a time of possession, i take that all day. You're not asking for a whole lot, Ike. You <laughs> mentioned Mike Tomlin, Ike. We're going to go on to the next segment. Uh-huh. I saw a terrible internet rumor of the possibility that he could join and become the next head coach of USC or LSU because he's in year 15 with the Steelers and everything. I, in my opinion, there there's nothing – like th this is just an unsubstantiated rumor. Like I don't think there's anything, any truth to this. If you, if you think differently, please speak up, Mike. But what I kind of want to turn more of this segment into is – if you had your choice, which is the better job, LSU, USC. But what say you, Ike Taylor? Any truth to that? And then we'll get into the discussion about which is the better job between the two storied programs. But for Coach T, the NFL is just too – it's where he wants to be. You know, he, he don't have to worry about no boosters. He ain't got to worry about recruiting. He ain't got to worry about babysitting no kids. So for me, the NFL – and, and he's at a, a very prestige organization, which is the Pittsburgh Steelers. And he know he can be there as long as he wants to. Now, on the flip side, if he wants to change the scenery, if he wants to change the scenery, if he wants some boudin, some crawfish, some esche, some, some good New Orleans talk, some athletes around the area that you have a strong possibility and in, in, in going to these national championship games, that's LSU. If you want the Hollywood life, if you want to meet some actors, if you want to start, start your own podcast, if you want to anything, if you want to, if you want to, 
if you just want to be around celebs, go your ass to USC. So, but for me, Coach T, I mean, both of these two sound good. It's just where he's at right now. And it will be a good change up for him. And they will pay him. That that's whatever he's getting paid now, Coach T will get paid five million more. So if Coach T getting paid nine million this year, somebody gonna offer him 14 million per he he will be the highest paid college coach. I guarantee. Guarantee he will be the highest paid college coach. But Coach T got it too good in Pittsburgh. I mean he embraced Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh is his home. That's where he at. Like that's 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 Coach T. Coach T now is a Yinzer. He's a four one two. He ain't going nowhere. My personal opinion is the setup is just too good for him in Pittsburgh, and he's at a plateau for his coaching career. All the guys who 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 co- who played under Coach T, they just say, man, he's just a good he's a good dad. He's a good father figure. He teaches us how to be men. You know what I'm saying? So, and that's what you got to love about Coach T. Everything, uh, Coach T too old to be babysitting. You know, I don't think, if Coach T would have started in college and had a lot of success in college, the Nick Sabres, the Urban Myers, the guys who can go back and forth, I think Urban Myers will go back to college and be like, y'all NFL dudes, y'all tripping. Y'all got too much rules for me. And yet, these men are too grown. I can yell at these kids. I can't yell at these men because they either swinging or throwing something back at me. So, but I think Coach T, man, Coach T, he, he, it's, it's a perfect fit where he's at, and that's being the Pittsburgh still the head coach. I, I cannot believe you forgot the gumbo in New Orleans, in the Baton Rouge area. You mentioned all these delicious foods, the beignets and everything, and you forgot the gumbo. I can't believe it. No, I didn't. I just let you say it. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't forget. I just let you say it. I knew you I tell gonna- you what. I tell you what, I thought that USC was by far the jo- uh, the preferred job, and I did my research, Ike. The last three coaches who have coached at LSU, Nick Saban, Les Miles, Ed Ogeron, have all won national titles. So if we're talking about bringing home some hardware, what actually yeah. matters in this sport, USC hasn't won a title since Pete Carroll was there, 2004. That was the last time a Pac-12 team, formerly the Pac-10, won a national title. So, yeah, you got the glitz and the glam of Hollywood. And from a lifestyle standpoint, I could get why you might prefer that. But if you actually want to win a title, and I know that your expectation in the SEC is going to be going up against Nick Saban and how you fare against the Alabama Crimson Tide. But that opportunity is there, and I see that the previous three head coaches have won a title. It, in, in my opinion, if that's it really just depends on what you value overall as a coach and just really from a lifestyle standpoint. So we'll see how all that shakes out. Both schools will have vacancies. Coach O is going to finish out this season. And then USC has a vacancy right now too. So very curious to see how those odds shake out. And I look at, you know, the odds of who could be the next guy at each of those programs. And when I, when I heard that Mike Tomlin's name came up, I'm like, this doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but this will make for a nice discussion right. of the pros and cons of each job here on our show. We'll, 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 see, we'll, see, what, we'll see what LSU and, and uh, USC got to offer uh, Uncle Prime, Deion Sanders. We'll see if his name come up in that circulation. Very curious. Two, I, I have two other names I thought of. I know – Billy Napier is the head coach at your alma mater right now. If LSU could poach him just because LSU is the more storied program. But then another name who I don't know why his name hasn't come up. And to me, it would be a natural fit specifically at LSU. How about Brett Venables, the defensive coordinator at Clemson? Look at the draft every year. And I don't need to go through all of the names. But they had defensive linemen every single year go in the NFL draft, if not in the first round. You talk about building your foundation from the ground up. I don't know why his name's not being considered for this here's LSU the, job. Here, here's why. Because Coach Dabo Sweeney understands and knows how valuable he is. So every time he gets a job offer, he gets a raise. So really, <laughs> he's, he's, he's getting paid like a head coach. He just so happened to be the defense coordinator. Coach Dabo understands that clearly. If I'm going to have any chance on keep winning these national championships, 
this young man who I got beside me as my defensive coordinator, I cannot let him go. So whatever whatever that man needs to be paid, pay that man. By the way, after you pay him, give me a little bit more too. That's why he ain't going to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, and LSU, they're going to pay Ed O $17 million. I don't know what else his staff is going to make as part of the buyout. So you know that the boosters there, like you mentioned the boosters earlier. I mean, you could be just talking about a bidding war of whoever, whichever candidate they want to go after. You know, we're going to put our boosters up against another uh, you know, program's booster. Picture that. They're paying a man $17 million to leave. <laughs> I want you to get yeah. out of my house, but I'm gonna pay you seventeen million dollars to get out of my house. <laughs> boy, I tell you, boy, these these college coaches, boy, they got it good with these buyouts. Yeah, I need to find a job that lets me do that, Ike. Hey, what is this? 2021. Yeah, 2024. We ain't gonna we ain't gonna be doing no buyouts. We're gonna be doing it's gonna be a lot of bidding wars. I'm telling you off of this podcast. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, Mark. Yeah. I I'll say this. I I, I do wanna work. I'd rather I I I wanna work. I don't want it's just like because honestly, you know, seventeen million dollars, you know, like what, what do you do with that in all honesty? But uh, I, I, we gotta keep we gotta keep the show rolling here. Uh <laughs> we gotta keep rolling here. Uh, another fun prop, which will happen first, the Arizona Cardinals losing or the Detroit Lions winning? Oh, no. <sighs> Detroit need a win, bro. Detroit definitely needs a win. You know, I'm getting tired of coach sitting on that post, on that podium crying. It's, 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 it, yeah. it, 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 it ain't got real. <laughs> and honestly, Detroit been in a lot of games. They just finding ways to lose. You know what I'm saying? So they just got to get over that hump. They just got to – once they get over that, find a way to win, they'll be just fine. Because I think – I looked at his coaching staff. He got a hell of a coaching staff. You know what I'm saying? It's just – right now, for me, they still don't – they're a year or two without the personnel that he wants. I think they did well in the draft, especially with uh, Suel Panay coming from – Oregon with that that offensive line, I think that was a perfect fit for their coach's personality and what what he wants to do as a Detroit Lion. But it's going to be a year or two, bro. So I think next draft, you know, once them boys yell and get together, then I think after that, them boys in two years, they'll be just fine. But, yeah, they got to find a win, and they got to find a win this year. So I'm not, I, I'll take the win over a Cardinals loss. Okay, interesting. I've got the schedules up right now. The Cardinals play the Texans this weekend, and they're something like, oh, I saw this line up to, like, I want to see 17 or 18 points. So I'd expect the Cardinals to take care of business against Houston right. in Week 7. Week 8, the Cardinals have the Packers, which will be maybe a preview of the NFC championship game. Maybe. I mean, two really, really good teams in the okay. NFC in Week 8. <laughs> Right. The Lions schedule, they've got the Rams this weekend. We know how stout the Rams have been this season. Then they've got the Eagles in week eight. So that's, you know, I think that Eagles matchup would be winnable. The Lions yeah. then have a bye week in week nine, and then they play our Steelers in week 10. So we'll see how all of that shakes out. I think the Eagles would be like the next winnable game for the Lions. But again, I look at the Cardinals schedule. I'd, I'd fully expect them to take care of business Houston uh, and uh, DeAndre Hopkins going against his former team as well. Yeah. Yeah, I think, yeah, yeah. DeAndre, 100%. Kyle, Kyle Murray just, you talking about league MVP right now in discussions, you know? Oh, That's yeah. what I'm talking okay. about with Kyle. Um, and you want to talk about somebody revamping what they was uh, as a Pro Bowl running back, James Conner. You know, obviously he's become Mr. Red Zone, Mr. Touchdown. You know what I'm saying? So, and DeAndre, it's crazy. I think they showed us that DeAndre had over 20 quarterbacks in the course of his career, and all he's been doing is being all pro and pro bowls. The stat, the stat is just crazy on what this man does week in and week out, regardless of who's throwing him the ball. Then you got AJ. So you got AJ Green on one side. You know, at least he's a threat. You wind up Checking him one on one, he's gonna make his play. So they they got they, then you just you just got hurts coming from the trade with the Philadelphia Eagles. Like 
Yeah, got, yeah, the tight end. The tight end, yep. They they got a they got a nice look. They got something going on over there, man. I, I think people aren't respecting what they got going on because they just think Arizona Cardinals and oh, they just okay. But last time somebody thought about the Arizona Cardinals, they almost went the Pittsburgh Steelers, you know what, in the Super Bowl. So oh, yeah. I'm not on the Arizona. Something you'd know a little bit about, Ike. Yeah, it's 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 real. When a team is good, you gotta you gotta trust and believe your eyes. You know, stop looking in the past on what they was. Like Arizona Cardinals is the for real deal, man. They really are good. They really, they really are good. It starts with that young man, Kyle Lamar. See, I, I'm going to take the Cardinals to lose before the Lions win just because that week eight matchup against the Packers is also a Thursday night football game. So okay. heck of a matchup there. Shortened week to prepare for that game as well. And you've got to go into Lambeau Field, which we know the home field advantage that that could play. So for that prop bet, and it is favored, you've got a little bit better odds. I'm going to pick the Cardinals to lose before the Lions win. Ike, we'll go to our next prop bet to uh, first coach to be fired. And looking at the odds yesterday, Bears head coach Matt Nagy was the favorite. I definitely think he's on the hot seat, but the Bears as a franchise typically don't fire their coach midseason. Uh, Urban Meyer, Joe Judge, Brian Flores in there. I know the Dolphins have been down coming off of a bad loss internationally to the Jaguars. Um Again, I, I look at Nagy and Meyer at the top of this list, Ike, and it's like, okay, if they're able to retain their job throughout the course of this season, where are you at at the end of the year? And if you're on the outside looking into the playoffs and from the Jag standpoint, if you don't feel that you're any better than you were a year ago when you got the number one overall pick, I think those two guys, it's, it's really a matter of when and not if, just based on where those teams are at right now. Um, but but what say you? Who uh, who stands out on this list to you? Could Urban Meyer? I think on both sides wouldn't be tripping. I don't think Mr. Khan, who's the who's the owner for the Jacksonville Jaguars, I don't think he'll be tripping on letting them go ASAP because of past circulations. And Coach Urban Meyer, he's cool with the buyout himself and him going back to college. He'll probably take a year off, get on TV, then go back to college. So. I think that's just a perfect situation, man. We win two games this year, maybe three games. We're really not moving in the direction I think we need to <clears throat> need to make as as a Jacksonville Jaguars organization. So that's why I think he's not really under fire, but I think it'd just be an easy and I, I hate even saying this. It'll just be an easy fire. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't think I don't think Coach Urban Meyer would be tripping. I think you know, he. I think he called Nick Saban up a lot. Like, damn, bro, I see why you did leave Miami. Because <laughs> dealing with these grown men, man, it's it's something different. And you know, some sometimes you're just who you are. That's what he is. He's a heck of a heck of a college coach. That's that's what he do. He win national championships, and he can recruit well, and he get guys ready for the NFL. That's Urban Myers. Now, when you actually get to the NFL, that's a whole different person. You know, so I think uh, Mr. Khan, though. I, if it keeps going the way it's going, it, it that'll be an easy, and I hate saying that part, an easy fire. I'm with you there just because in the span of a few months, they had the fiasco of hiring the strength trainer who had, you know, questionable past. You had the whole fiasco of bringing in Tim Tebow to play tight end. And just honestly, it, it's a joke. Like, I, I'm just right. going to say, this is no knock on Tim Tebow. It, it's Correct. just a joke. Right. Then you have the whole fiasco of him not flying back with the team and the whole incident that happens at uh, his bar in Columbus, Ohio as well. And all of that happening over a short span. And it's not so much that it's any one individual, one of those things, but it's the Jaguars record and their lack of success this season where you're doing all of that. And then it's compounded by, all of those incidents. And so I am with you with Urban Meyer. Again, I think Matt Nagy's on the hot seat too. We saw several weeks ago at Justin Fields' debut where he gets sacked nine times in his debut against the Browns. Miles Garrett had four and a half sacks in one game. And I say, okay, is that coaching? Are you putting your player in a situation to succeed when you're lining up a 39-year-old Jason Peters at left tackle, a future Hall of Fame player, but a guy who was sitting on his couch in, in August you bring him in because your rookie Tevin Jenkins gets hurt. And so, okay, 
you know, you're putting a 39 year old player up against one of the premier defensive players in a one on one scenario. Is that personnel? Is it coaching? Is it a little bit of both? And so you see why those two guys are at the top of this list because, you know, in the NFL, it, it, you always tell me, like, it's a young man's league. It's what have you done for me lately? And with, with those two coaches, again, it's maybe not mid season, but where are you at at the end of the year? And if you are where you are right now, I would not be surprised if both Chicago and Jacksonville have vacancies this off season. Yeah. I think when Coach Nagy though is, I mean, just the circulation, man, it's, it's just the selfish part, you know, and the selfish part, man, you know, when we win, it's all me. When we lose, it's somebody else. And guys don't like or respect that part. Once you get to that point, don't nobody trust the words you say. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, he wound up calling a few games and they wound up losing because he was the OC. Passed it down to the to the young OC. They wind up winning a few. Bill Laser. Yep. Since he the head coach, he made that decision, man. That's all me. Man, go ahead on give Coach Laser his props. Say the man called a heck of a game. He's glad he did pass it down to him. It took the load off of him. He's able to watch offense, defense, and special teams. But he didn't say that. So that's a bunch of BS. So just looking at that from a coach's standpoint and looking at that from a player's standpoint, like, oh, you just think this is just all you. You know what I'm saying? So I have no respect for that. So I can, I can see why he can lose or on his way or possibly lost his locker off of that incident, especially if Coach Laser is a player's coach. You know what I'm saying? So it's a difference. The, the story is telling itself. You the OC, we lost. I won, I won if the players wanted to play for you. You put in Bill Laser, we wound up winning. I wonder if they want to play for him more. <laughs> this, ain't, this ain't hard at all. This ain't hard at all. So you know what, man? Go ahead and get some humble pie. Sit your butt at home because you had the opportunity. You thought it was all, all about you at one point in time, and you didn't give props to somebody who's, who's been putting our team in a good situation, who's your OC in laser. So think about that. See if you can change your ways. If you don't want to change your ways, you won't ever coach, be a head coach in the NFL again. So you really tell them who you really are when, when stuff like that happens. So – that's all I got to say about Nagy. Yeah, really- and I would I would think a head coach would want to give credit to his step. Like, being in a position of power, if you're able to delegate, I think that says more about you and being able to provide credit to others and then put them in positions to succeed than to say, me, 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 me. Like, you told me early on when we started doing this podcast, the way that you and your Steelers – teammates role it's not what about what i'm doing what are we doing collectively that's exactly what you're talking about right there that's coming from a player who played 12 years in the league as well just look at let's just look at the coach nick saban coach nick saban man everybody leave every time somebody comes somebody leave and get a head coaching job or get an offensive coordinator, coordinator job or every time somebody gets fired they go back down to coach nick saban wind up winning the championship then get a then get a job after that coach nick coach nick figured it out the man, he, he know exactly what he's doing. The more guys I can have under me to improve their resume, we win in national championships. They leave, and then I can build somebody else up. But that's why I'm here. I'm staying in Alabama forever. That's exactly what I'm going to do. That's exactly what I'm going to do. Hopefully, I'm at Alabama to a point where I got some of my players who didn't make it to the league. They can coach with me, and I can get them head coaching jobs. That's how Coach Saban is thinking. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ike, a few more segments we need to get to as we start to wrap up here on the show. You think Cam Newton's coming back at any point in the 2021 season? I did see that he's vaccinated now, but it, any any fit? Yeah, baby. Got that vaccination. Yeah, he had to get that vaccination, baby, that left all. <laughs> it definitely played a factor. Like, let's not kid ourselves, but do you think he comes back for any team this year? Yo. Yeah. Yeah, he he should he should he should. I'm trying to I'm I'm trying to ponder and see what team. Uh, uh, this is a live look into the mind of psychic Ike. So Houston, really... Houston should be one. Okay. If they don't do this three way trade with Deshaun Watson, Miami should be two. And right now, Baker. Nope. Nope. 
No. no. Houston and Miami. No state tax. <laughs> Florida and <laughs> Texas right there. Ike, you'd get plus 150 odds, minus 200. So he is favored not to return this year. I'm not sure this is the end or not for Cam Newton. I can't imagine he'd want to sit on the sidelines and hold a clipboard. We will see how that shakes out. Few weeks, said, seven ma- Go ahead, hey, go ahead, Ike. Mark, he said he didn't mind holding the clipboard. Yeah, he did. Come on. What, what you say, listen, who you are is what you do, not necessarily what you say that you do there. So I, I, I can understand him playing good but soldier, he, he, but he wants the he opportunity ordered. to get back on the field, and, and he should. He's a former MVP. Listen, yeah, 17 years ago, he, he, would rather, he would rather hold a clipboard than to be sitting at home right now with his dogs and his kids still at a young age thinking he got a little bit of juice left in his tank. I'm telling you that that lifestyle is a little bit different. You know what? I've been at home for four or five weeks. I'd rather hold this damn clipboard and get back to my football routine than daddy, 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 daddy. daddy. <laughs> right now my mind ain't ready for this. <laughs> my mind ain't ready for this. So yeah, I think he would, I think he wouldn't mind holding the club more, more. I'm just saying. All right, all right. Week seven matchups: I Chiefs at Titans at Nissan Stadium in Nashville. Your boy will be there. I'm going to this game in Nashville, Tennessee this yeah. weekend. Yes, cannot wait. And I tell you what, Titans come on off a big, big victory when it's everyone counts them out. But we see what King Henry can do. And if he gets another 2,000 yard season, Ike, we got to start having a conversation about Derrick Henry of you know where he ranks among the best running backs of all time. He's been incredible for this Titans team this year. I cannot wait to see this matchup and the Chiefs able to right the ship in Week Six, but they're kind of stumbling right now. Who you got in this matchup between the two AFC teams? King Henry. King Henry gonna run mm-hmm. all the way down the boys though. Because right now, man, they don't want to tackle nobody. And they're going to play cover two. They're going to play cover two on defense to make sure, man, this – man, I'm telling you, man, the, the, the – Patrick Mahomes got to figure this thing out, man. He he got to dink and dunk. He got to understand, man, let me dink and dunk and, and win a few ball games because you you talking about time of possession. Tennessee definitely going to try to win that time of possession by giving that boy King Henry the ball for real. I'm going to go not so fast on you here, Ike, because I knew you Titans would. rookie cornerback Caleb Farley on injured reserve out for the year with the torn ACL. He had back issues coming out of Virginia Tech, which we talked about. Heck of a cover corner, but our injury is going to be an issue coming into the season. Tyreek Hill, Travis Kelsey and company, I think, get it rolling on the road in Nashville. Give me the Chiefs as on the road against Tennessee this weekend. I got to go against you there. The only thing that's going to be rolling is Ken Henry running 22 miles per hour scoring touchdowns on KC defense. <laughs> All right. I, uh, Bengals, uh, I, excuse me. I, I've got uh, a wrong matchup. Let's go to Bucks and Bears. Uh, this game's going to be in Tampa Bay. I would imagine that the Buccaneers are going to be able to cover as double-digit favorites at home. I just, Who you got I this just, one? This game I'm excited to watch, though. I'm gonna roll. With, I'm gonna roll with the Bears. I'm gonna roll you with love the Bears. The Bears. <laughs> I, I love. I love because that's where the family's from, Ike. I love that you love Chicago. No, nah, first of all, Chicago is a hell of a city. I love Chicago. Beautiful. Oh, yeah. it's, it's just cold. It's it's only summertime, one week out of the year. That's the only thing I just like about Chicago. I go to Chicago for one week after that one week, everything get back cold. I'm like, holy moly. But other than that, as far as like the city being beautiful, the view and all that good stuff, man, you got to love Chicago. But I got the best. I got Justin Fields. I think this is a good matchup for the defensive line because they have a quarterback who who really can't move as much, and that's Tom Brady. Um, they always give Tom Brady hell when it comes down to these matchups. So yeah. I'm going to tell you, I go Bears, bro. The Bears actually beat the Buccaneers a year ago, and it Correct. was amazing TV. That was the game where Brady forgot how many downs there were. He didn't realize it was fourth down. So Correct. talk about a relentless pass rush. If Robert Quinn plays, he's on the COVID list right now. 
Whether he plays, I think, could be a big factor in this one. He's been the Robin to Khalil Mack's Batman, and sure. he's had a nice redemption season in Chicago this year. Keeping an eye on that headed into this one. Two other matchups we need to get to, Ike. AFC North matchup, Bengals at Ravens. Ravens at home, six-and-a-half-point favorites. Baltimore has been playing excellent football with Lamar right now. Going to be at home as well. I'm going to take the Ravens over the Bengals. What say you? I'm going to go with Joe Burrow, man. Joe Cool. Go, Joe Cool, man. Joe Cool. Because I'm looking at the Ravens defense. All they play is man. They, 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 they got to mix it. They, they got to mix it up. Joe mix it. And let's not forget, they got a hell of an offensive line, too, the Cincinnati Bengals. They might got a top five offensive line in the league. People just sleeping on them. But it's going to be, boy, you talking about battle of two young studs. Holy moly, at that quarterback position. Holy moly. Yeah, I'm taking the Bengals, bro. I'm rocking with the I'm, I'm rocking with Joe Cool and the company, man. Me and Joe Cool, me and Joe Cool in the offseason, man. I'm going to make sure Joe Cool, I get a, I get a one of a kind cigar in Joe Cool hand. That's what I'm going to do, man. There you go, Ike. There you go, Ike. I know that, that there's that. Video clip of him smoking a cigar after the national championship in 2019. That was epic. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's I'm not even. I... Slow mode, when they put that thing in slow motion, I was like, whoa, I'm Superman. <laughs> but I'm Superman. Ike, right, final matchup Seahawks and Saints on Monday night football. Given the Seahawks struggle, I'm going to go with the Saints at home, Superdome, Louisiana. And I'm not sure if uh, the Manning cast is back this week. I hope that it is. I know they took a few weeks off. Yeah, you know who I'm going with. I'm going with Crab Legs Winston. You already know what I'm rocking with, baby. That's exactly what I'm doing. <laughs> I've never I've never heard that nickname for Jameis before. Yeah, so there you go. We just gave one. All righty. Ike, you're the absolute best. We're going to be back on this podcast a week from today. So this episode's due out Friday. Because of the Steelers' bye, we're going to have a full preview of the Week 8 matchup against the Browns. We'll be back one week from today, so only one episode next week. I want to give you a shout-out, Ike. You're my dog. Uh, the Belief Podcast Network, the folks over at Brinks TV, led by John Brinkus, Courtney Vargas, Herbert Diaz, and their team over there. Bet online today's sponsor, and then to you, the listeners and viewers of the Believe in Steelers podcast. Thank you for tuning in. Man, I'm gonna piggyback off all what Mark just said. Mark, I gotta give you a massive shout out. Break TV, Miss Courtney and our crew, massive shout out. Bet online, massive shout out. Believe in Steelers podcast for giving us an opportunity. Big massive shout out. Want to give a shout out to all the viewers and listeners. Make sure y'all rate and review us with the five piece, please. Spicy. <laughs> for Ike Taylor, I'm Mark Bergen. Thank you for listening to the Believe in Steelers podcast. We will see you next week. Take care and so long, everyone. Peace.